is and 98 percent of the experiences at charging points is really really positive and people are there to have the chat and yeah i kind of this is really nerdy but if i see another car like mine i'll wave <laughs> <laughs> i just feel you're, the exactly yeah so they were so we, we were seeing, back, sometimes <laughs> <laughs> depends on how late it is <laughs> night <laughs> but it's it's they were saying it's kind of like the new smokers area not that i was a smoker oh, but it's that no idea way. that people gathering together because you're sitting there for 20 minutes so yeah, it's true. you you kind of find out how people are finding their experience and, and that kind of thing so it's been lovely in that regard. So actually, you hear a bit on the news that there's queues at these charging stations, which you're talking about there. So is that what you're on about when you have a couple in front of you there and you're waiting to use them? Or Sometimes. I've only had a couple of situations where there's been kind of congestion. So on one occasion, I was in Kerry and there was three cars and they were parked and abandoned. So there was no way of guessing. Wow. And it was the only fast charger around. And there was nowhere else that was an opportunity to fast charge and there was no way of finding out how long they'd be. So there's lots of different apps now out there yeah. to kind of help plug share and that so you can let people know when you're expected to be back. Nobody minds waiting. It's not knowing how long you might have to wait if somebody's not with the car. Yeah. So, you know, at the fast charge now, Paul, do you find people typically stay? It's funny, I wouldn't use the fast charger that much. When I'm going down to Waterford, I would. Yeah. I, in, the, yeah. in the kind of, in the last car I had, right? and you charge once and that was grand and it was always like you can be lucky and you can be just really unlucky like if you're going to peak times a day if you leave it saturday at 12 you know you're going to be in a queue yeah. but like the majority of the places where you're queuing now there's a coffee shop or there's it's a garage a decent enough garage and like people say oh i couldn't be you know I, I wouldn't want to be kind of breaking my journey but Kind of, you probably do it anyway, and you just get used to it. It's kind of, it's, it's a nice break. You're in out 20 minutes if it's a fast charge, and you're back in the car. And like, you're probably 25 by the time you've done everything. It's particularly if you have a young family and stuff like that, I, I found it. But now, with the one I, with the Nissan Leaf I have, I don't need to stop on the way down. Now, if I was absolutely booked at 120, I'd have to stop. Yeah. But if you're kind of, you moderate your driving techniques a hell of a lot more when you have an electric car, probably because you don't want to stop. Yeah. You know, or you're kind of thinking, oh, if there's someone there or charging or whatever, but yeah. And would, would you, when you stop, do you take a full fill or no. do you just take what you want to I get you to the next, to get you to wherever you're going kind yeah. of thing, is it? Yeah, absolutely. I'll kind of bring it up to just get me there or home type of thing and then when I'm home I can charge away and then it's it's no hassle at all because home is the cheapest place to charge so it doesn't make sense to stay on the public yeah. charger any longer than you need to when I first started off with my one it was free yes. it was free to charge now that was had its good bits and bad bits because you had people who had no chargers at home standing beside it for god knows how long but again very rarely it would happen very rarely are they broken down twice, I think it happened to me. Yeah. And they were, you ring the number and it's pretty much fixed. You know, when, you're, or they get, when you dial into it, they can reset it or whatever it is. Yeah. So I'd never broken down or lost charge or whatever you'd call it. Yeah, so kind of, look, maybe that's just look, maybe there's horror stories out there that I've never kind of heard of. But um, it's funny when you say, Ruth, about your dad, um, going into the garage with you and kind of whatever being doing the test drive and then considering buying it when I kind of had mine let's say back in 2014 it's amazing the amount of people that would gravitate towards you and particularly kind of pensioners who were thinking of upgrading their car or whatever the amount of uh, pensioners I've driven around the town or around <laughs> car parks or even let them drive it yeah. Yeah. just to show it to them because you know normally with new technology you think oh it's young people and it's whatever yeah. whoever's a bit of a tech head or a nerd might try it out but, yeah but it has like for me i find it is a great conversation point when you are out places i certainly i was staying at a hotel in la hinch two yeah. weeks ago Right. And I ended up having three separate conversations about the car. One when I was plugging it in at the hotel, one when I was unplugging it at the hotel, right. and then one when I was parked at the beach. Right. And the first lady was American. She was telling me her son had bought a Tesla. Oh, nice. 
So she was telling me that experience and how did I find it. And the next morning there was a guy who was driving an Audi, but he'd ordered his Kia and he wanted to chat about it and he was just waiting for it to come in. And then when I was at the beach, a gentleman came over and asked me how I liked it. His car was due in next week. He'd ordered the ID3 as well and how excited he was and how much he loved it. And it's so lovely. It's, it is like a community of people chatting about a shared experience. Because yeah. yeah. what is it, yeah. about 5% of the population currently are electric? Is it that? 50,000 electric cars or something? 60,000 now 60, on the last count they were saying, I think, yeah. 